and put forward. So, have I got some agreement on some working out and some numbers? Do you feel happy? Now, here's a funny little point, because you look at this working, and you look at your answer, the number that you get at the bottom, and then you look back at the question, and you're like, hmm? That's not, you know, it doesn't even round to what I need, right? Like, I could round that to 4, 9, and that would be fine, okay? Now, firstly, is that okay? But it's approximately, like, what does approximately mean in this case? I'm, I'm quite happy to say that is approximately 2, 3, 1, 9, 50, because they haven't said to how many decimal places or significant figures or anything like that. I'm totally okay with that. Just as a little side note, this figure here, as we've seen in the past, you've got to make sure, even if this was say 2, 3, 1, 9, 4, 8, 4, instead of 4, 8, 5, I cannot round down in this case, even though a 4 should round down to 48. Why can't I round down? If I round it down, even by uh, 0.4 of a cent, right? 0.4% kind of matters when you do it 300 times and over the course of 25 years. You will not pay off the entire thing if you just go a little bit short, a little bit short, every single time. So as in the cases where we've been like, oh, at what point do I get to this amount? Or at what point does a population grow to this amount? Um, you've got to make sure you get that and pass. Okay? So, that's part two. That's the end. Part three, I'm not going to put the working on the board just yet. I'm not going to hold your hand through it. I want you to read it with me and let's just unpack a strategy for it. Okay? It says, after how many months will the amount owing uh, become less than $180,000? After how many months will the amount owing be less than $180,000? Quick question, $180,000, is that a random number? Just out of curiosity, what's significant about that number? Half. It's exactly half. Okay. So they're, they're trying to find out, at what point will I be halfway paying off the actual debt? Okay. How am I going to do this? How am I going to, what equations am I going to form that are going to get me to this point? Over here, part two, we went straight to 300. What information told me? How did I know to make it 300? Like, where did that number come from? It's a number of something, but what something in the question? That's, that's how long it takes me to repay, right? Or how long it takes Ari to repay. So that's where I got that number from. Now, I do not know that number for this part, for part three. So it's M, okay? But I do know what it should be. It should be 180,000. So I'm just going to leave that there. Just like this first line here. It's not the answer, but it sets the trajectory for you how you find that answer. Have a look at what I've written over there. I've said the amount owing will be exactly $180,000 when? And then I form this equation. Sorry, it's not a very big um, sign over here. I was running out of space. So I talked about the fact that if you had a look at the question, the most technically correct way to actually answer it is with an inequality, because I want it to be less than, right? But I'm going to deal with it as an equation, because then I don't have to worry about left hand, right hand side, and logs and what have you. Um, and then I'll find that point and interpret the answer accordingly. Okay. So have a look at what I've written. This is just my expression a of m on the left hand side, with one difference, which is that the expression I had for a of m had the letter M in it. Right? Do you remember that? Because I didn't know what the monthly repayment was. But as of the end of part two, I know what the monthly repayment is. So I, I put it in place. Okay? Um, you might think, oh, there's a slight sort of rounding issue that's going on here. Right? But they've told you in the question, they've said, this is what the repayment is. So you can always use that. And in fact, even if you couldn't do part two, you can do part three by using their fact. Okay? So, I pop this into place. Um, I can simplify this a little bit, can't I? Because that multiplied by 200 is just a number. I wonder if someone can tell me what it is um, once I put this out the front. What is $2,319.50 multiplied by 200? Someone got it? Did you get it, Russell? What's the one? 63,000. Is it? No, Exactly. Oh, right. Here. Yep. 
No? <laughs> it is, but if you used which value? Yeah, I, it's, used, the, I it's, used the rounded value. Yeah. Why did you use the rounded value and not the exact that value no. that we found out? So, here's an interesting thing. A bit of a, um, bit of a um, piece of agency trivia for you. Okay. Um, this question is, is scaffolded, and we see scaffolded questions all the time where there's a part one, there's a part two, and then the real question, the actual question we really want to ask is right here at the end. Okay? Now, if in part one and two, earlier parts, they've given you some kind of rounded figure, strictly speaking, you know, this is the most precise number. It's what we worked out. We have more details. So this will give you, and this, this comes more into play, I'd say, for example, when you do, remember you did like trigonometry, sine rule, cosine rule, and you do like a bearings question, and then you'd be like, oh, my, my, so facing that direction is like, you get an exact angle to get there, and then you, you round, like to a decimal place or to a nearest minute or something like that. But clearly if you actually round and you, you go that, you know, in 500 kilometers that distance, you'd actually end up, end up a little bit off, right? So you're always better off using more precision. However, when they give you a number, they actually have ready in their marking solution two solutions based on whether you use the exact one or the provided number. If they provide you a number, they have to let you say, I'm going to use that number. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this figure here. It does simplify my working a teeny bit. And because I have sort of a thumbs up from them to use the rounded figure, I'm going to go with that. However, just with the proviso that, if you wanted like actual accuracy, you would only round at the very, very final step, right? Every time you introduce a rounding, the more working you do with it, um, the more your error just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so special case in which I can use this um, this rounded figure because they told it to me. Uh, was that the right today, Kira? Nine hundred. Nine nine eight. Nine hundred. Oh, just nine hundred. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I suppose the 250 can do that. Then I've got the rest of my brackets. And then this is the figure I'm looking for. Okay, now what am I solving for in this case? I'm solving for m. How long have I been in there for? And the n is nestled up here in the power. Okay, so I'm going to have to get all of my n's together in one spot. Since it's up in the power, I'm going to have to use logs as well. I can't avoid it. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to expand out. Why? Why must I expand? It's because of these guys, right? Like there's two separate ones. I need to get them in one spot. That's just changing the subject 101, right? So 350,000 take away that many. How many 1.005 to the n's will that lead to? It? Take away. Uh, is it going to be 103,100? Is that right? Yeah? Someone do some numbers for me. I'm a, I'm a mathematician of a calculator. Someone got it? 1039, is that right? Yeah? 103900, lots of this. Oops, sorry. Yes? Oh, sorry. I'm doing a medium disaster here. Is that okay? Yes? No numbers correctly? I'm only getting a couple of nods, so I'm not 100% confident here. You have, okay, good. More nods, I'm happy. Alright, I've, I've extended this as well, so there's a double negative, plus 4, 6, 3, 900, and there's this guy hanging over there. Okay? Um, I'm clearly on my way. I've got only a single N left, but I've got all of this mess over here, so I guess I'll subtract this from both sides. What does that give me on the right hand side? Alright. Minus. Two and what eight three nine hundred. Thank you. And you can see here, this is not that hard to deal with, right? Apart from my brackets constantly changing spots. Um, I just need to divide through both sides, which will give me one point zero zero five to the n equals what? So it gets rid of my negatives. I'm going to get a fraction here, right? I'd like to keep this exact for the same reason that I was talking about before. One on one. Hit the fraction button. Come on, you can give it to me exactly. 2529? 2539. 2539 on? 1039. 1039. Yes? No? Consensus? I'm putting my life in your hands, guys. I'm trusting you on this one. I'm ready now to get in, right? So I'm going to take logs of both sides. I'll rewrite this thing. This is 
log base, the base stays the same. This is this number over here. You can use change of base to work out what this is. And then I think I'm going to get a, some decimal places, right? What am I going to get? 2 0. Oh, Go for it, Jason. Oh, chat out. 201.54. Okay. So, as we've mentioned in the past, you get to a number and then your task is to interpret this. So, what does it mean? I'm looking for a number of months, right? Now, I've got like a fractional number of months, so I want to get past that point because I when you look back at the question when do I pass 180,000? So, I'm going to say after 202 months. And that's actually my solution. Now, it's always important when you can to number one, know what on earth that means, and number two, do a sense check. Right? So I'm gonna get some numbers from Paul Mike in a second, but before I do, think about what this means. How long is the life of the loan? It's 300 months, right? So we're like two-thirds the way in, more than four years after the actual chronological halfway point. Two-thirds of the way in when you finally pay off half the loan. Two-thirds of the way in, and you pay off half the loan. So my question to you is, why is this so slow? Why is it so long after halfway that we actually make it past halfway? Now, to help you sort of get your head around this question, because some people got a figure that was quite different to this, and your sense check, if it's under 150, should tell you that this can't be right. Something's gone drastically wrong. It's got to be more than that. Paul, can you tell me? I think I asked you to work out A1, right? Well, what was A1? 358,488. 88? Oh, just 80. Thank you. And uh, Michael, can you give me A2? 358,958. Okay. Just put your pens down for a moment. Now let me make you depressed for a brief moment. Okay? We started at $360,000, right? Have a look at the tiny, tiny dent we made in that $360,000 after a month, right? How much was the repayment again? It was this, right? So you'd be like, oh cool, I've knocked $2,000 off it, right? You haven't even knocked $1,000 off it. You've just barely knocked off half of that. $520,000 is how much you've actually reduced the principal by. And it's not that different when you go to the next one, right? So what's going on? Do you remember? Have I got uh, sort of? So I'll use this part. Do you remember I mentioned to you that this guy out the front represents the original loan, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing forever? But then these guys over here represent all your repayments, all added up, right? And they're kind of in this tug of war. This guy is huge. These guys are tiny, but eventually they just outnumber. There's 300 of them, right? So eventually they outnumber this amount, okay? But that doesn't stop the principal from fighting. And that's why this number goes down so very slowly. At the beginning, at the start of your loan, you repay off hardly anything. Um, in fact, this is, this is not too bad. Some loans are really worse than this, depending on your interest rate, okay? That's why we got it past halfway, way after halfway, before we actually successfully pay off half the loan. Does that make sense?